Okay, uh, welcome. Today we're going to use the new custom gauge control uh, to create a gauge and save it to our custom gallery. And the gauge we're going to create today is this one here. I've just taken a screen capture of a gauge I found uh, on the web somewhere. We just want to show how if you needed to create a gauge of a certain look and feel, uh, you can do that. Um, and so this is the one we're going to create. Um, that's a screen capture. So. Uh, first thing we need to do is go to your sensor components uh, page and uh, or pane, and you do that by clicking on the view tab, and just simply clicking the check this box checks uh, show sensor components, and you'll see there's a bit of a different order now. We've got the line chart, column chart, and histogram now at the top. They precede the others, uh, and we put the custom gauge in front of all of them just because we we think that from a utility standpoint and its flexibility, it may be one of the more common that you use. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, drop it, just drag and drop onto the screen, and you'll see you get a very uh, generic looking, kind of white label looking gauge. Uh, and if you click on the um, uh, demo mode on or off, uh, you'll see the, uh, the needle go back and forth. It'll just oscillate. Um, but really, if you think about the original gauges that we had, something like this, and if you double click on this, you have just a few things you can change. Maybe the, uh, this is the original gauge here. Uh, you can change the color, and we provided a, just a, a lot of flexibility with that. But essentially, the size was hardwired, uh, the types of rims, and the types of backdrops was hardwired, and we had just a few different types of scales to select from. Uh, and so what we wanted to do is significantly expand on that. We have a lot of users that are saying we'd like different gauges, and we'd like to have the scale start over here and end over here, and we want to add text, and we want to add uh, regions or zones. So uh, enough said. That's the gauge. Now, one thing you notice, the original gauge, you couldn't size this. This one, uh, you can actually make any size you want. And uh, you'll see the fonts kind of remain the same, but you'll see the flexibility with the fonts when we go in the properties dialog. Um, and so what we're going to do is uh, we just double click on this and you see we go into uh, quite a large dialog box. Let me go back out. I'm going to make this thing the regular size here, about like that. And um, you see you have kind of a Goliath dialog box, but once you look at how it's organized, type and range, background, major ticks, minor ticks, uh, scale axis, gauge value, needle and center cap, uh, and the arcs that you can add, and then you can add text. You'll see that it is fairly straightforward. Now you'll find that the data source uh, now, when you apply or when you uh, when you apply a data source that would be uh, the gauge would represent, you double you click on this, and you'll go into this separate dialog box, and that's where you select your data sources. Um, so anyway, without further ado, you'll notice everything you can do here. You can give it a gradient background, a solid color. Let's just start with the background. Um, actually, you start with type and range. You've got full circle and you've got semicircle. Uh, if we stick with full circle, you've also got track fills, uh, so you can just simply go as track fills or a needle. When you're doing needle, you can either do needle cap, uh, you can turn the needle cap on or off. You see the needle cap is now off. And you can also have a narrow needle. Uh, you can have just a single line needle, which is the most simplified form, or you can let it uh, draw out in kind of a expanded thicker needle. Uh, with a little bit of a tail on that. Uh, this cap radius you can also add, you can make that much larger. I'm just adding size to that. So you'll see, and we can offset the value here, uh, the gauge value, we can just offset that in the Y dimension and bring that out. Uh, so you have quite a bit of uh, flexibility, and let's stay away from that for the, for the moment. Uh, what we want to do is look at the track fill and some of these other things. We've got a border here, we can add a border, we can make that very thick. Uh, or we can go back to one, and um, but I think probably the most significant thing here, set aside the different types of backgrounds and everything, is the way that the scaling can be applied. You virtually have no limitation to how that scale is set. So you have a raw value of zero and a maximum value of a thousand in this particular gauge, but we could easily change that to zero to ten. Uh, now we go from zero to ten, uh, or we could go zero to uh, fifteen hundred and it will automatically scale. Uh, and you can choose the um, precision of the scale as well. The precision is in the major ticks zone where the values are set. And you can see we can give it a number of significant digits past the decimal. Um, but in this case, uh, what we're going to do is, so we've got uh, 0 to, let's go back to 0 to 1,000. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and we've got a gauge diameter of, of 330 uh, pixels. 
uh, we've got a start position of this arc. So you have an arc that goes from here all the way around of 360 degrees, and we can move that. Notice how I'm just giving it, I'm starting it over. Let's start it at 270. Um, there it's at 270 degrees. And the end, pause, end position is 360, which means the number of degrees that it goes around. But we can shorten this. Let's say we wanted this to be 270 degrees total in range. And so we would do this. And you can see it splits the axis. So we'll go to 270. Uh, and there we go. And so you see that you have this complete flexibility in terms of the, the, the kind of the arc length of the scale itself. Um, and you can do a number of things. You can offset that scale. You can bring it in. You can bring it out um, and uh, do a number of other things. But sparing that detail, um, you have many, many other things here you can do virtually, as I mentioned earlier, limitless possibilities. Um, and you can give it a gradient background or I'll actually just change the fill on this. Let's make it black and we'll give the, the, the tick marks white. And so we'll do a kind of a reverse out model gauge value. We'll make that white and, um, and then we'll change the needle color to some maroonish color. And so you can see how uh, we can give the number of minor divisions, make that 10. And so we have a little bit more of an accurate uh, reading there. And um, uh, this is just going to continue to oscillate. It's just one way of looking at your, it gives you a sense of how it might move and what that needle would look like as it moves. Um, and there are a number of other things we can do. We can add an arc. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of this because we've made this, um, let's just go ahead and say okay. So now we have this. And let's say we need three of these. We'll just do a control copy and then a control paste. And then uh, we'll do a control copy and a control paste. And so once you have something that takes a lot of time that you customize, you can actually uh, just uh, do a control C uh, for copy and then control V for paste. And uh, you'll instantly have other copies. And you can actually change those sizes too. And so we could do something, uh, let's get this guy out of the way, uh, and something like this. Now you'll notice that this little thing here will actually cut off the, uh, and it turns out we were going to uh, eliminate that and have it be um, uh, uh, set to exactly the width. But we felt that it might be advantageous to have variable height width as well, so you could cut things out. So we're leaving that in. You'll have a little flexibility to make it uh, not visible. Okay, so we're back. We've cleaned up the screen, uh, brought this back over uh, to show the gauge we're going to create, and I'll show you how we create this exact gauge. Um, so the, I'm going to move fairly fast because you'll be able to pause this video and replay it many times, and there's a lot to cover. So first thing we're going to do is we want to add a custom gauge to the screen, a generic custom gauge. And, uh, and what we're going to do, I want to keep this thing on the screen so we can continue to reference it. Bear with me a moment, and we'll reduce the size here, put this right here, and we'll leave this guy right there, and there we go. Okay, so there's our reference gauge. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll double click on this, and what we first want to do is get the right scaling. So we want to go 0 to 100. So let's change the scaling, 0 to 100, press Enter. That's the right scaling. Now what we want to do is it looks like we have a zero start point of about, it's, uh, this would be 180, so that's probably 210. So let's go bring this down to 210. You can see the zero coming around. Uh, watch that zero, and I think it's probably going to be right around 210. Yep. Okay, and we notice that it doesn't. It ends about 30 degrees that way. So we're going to reduce the end position by 30 degrees. So 330 would be, oh, looks like it's a little bit more. So there is 60 degrees. Okay. All right, so there we have it, 0 to 100. We've got the right scaling. Uh, we like that. So what we're going to do now is we notice the axis is a little deeper on the inside, so we're going to bring that in. So out of the major ticks range, let's go tick offset. We'll bring it in to about right there. We notice that their uh, axis, there is no axis. So we're going to go down to scale axis and we'll turn that off. And now we notice that the minor ticks, looks like they've got well, six or seven. That doesn't really make sense. But anyway, uh, let's just do 10 anyway. Uh, so we're going to make 10 minor divisions. So now we have 10 minor divisions in between the majors. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this offset. Uh, so that it's greater and we're going to put it right in. I'm just going to click on this until we're right in there. Okay, so it's looking a little close to that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make these ticks, looks like they're a little longer than mine, so the length that we're going to go about right there. 
and uh, they're a little more near. Oh, we'll just leave it like that. That's fine for now. Uh, notice that the numbers are a little smaller. So now what we're going to do is deal with these values. And so under major ticks, the values, if we turn this off, they go away and so do the ticks. Um, but we want to check the font. We want to go to, I'd say, about right like that. The other thing we can do is just click on font and go into this dialog box and change the fonts this way and actually set their sizes. So we could do something like that. Uh, although I don't think that's the right font, at least if we're trying to match this identically. Uh, and let's go down to 12 where we had it. I think that's, yeah, let's go down two more. There we go. All right, so uh, I want to go 15. Okay, so that's pretty close. And uh, the next thing we want to do, it looks like they don't have as nice of a needle as we do. Uh, so, But let's make a straight needle. Uh, so that will go narrow needle. All right, so now we have that. And now we want to do these bands on the inside. We call these arcs, and this is optional. First thing we're going to do is create this green one. It's from 0 to 40. We're going to click on Show Arc 1. We're going to make it green, and we're going to go 0 and to 40. We enter 40 and press Enter. And notice that it's not, it could be a little further, and it's certainly not as thick, so we just change the width. We keep doing this, and there we have that. Uh, so that's good. Now we go from 40 to 80, and that'll be yellow. And so we go 40 to 80, and we can just enter these numbers in. The width is 19, that's good, and the radius is 80, and the color is yellow, and we press Enter. There's that one. And now we do 80 to 100, and that's one more, and that'll be the red one. Uh, and we'll do 80 to 100, and we'll do 19 as the width and 80 is the, the radius, and so there's that one. Uh, and it looks like our cap's a little thicker than their cap, so we'll just reduce the radius. Uh, that's about where they're at. They got a gray center, so we're gonna do a cap fill of a light gray. Uh, and uh, let's see, it looks like they've got an outside border here. Now one thing you can do, you can change the border width here and make it black. You can see this outside border, but they already have that, and theirs is gray. Uh, but what they have is they have this secondary radius there. And so what we're going to want to do is create that. And we can use this last little arc availability here. Eventually, you'll have as many of these as you want. Right now, you can do up to four. And we want this to be from zero to uh, all the way around to uh, the, the, the full circumference. So leave it zero to zero. And the width is one. That's fine. But the radius is going to be way out here. I'd say about 146. That would be about where it is, and that looks like about that. And let's click the OK. There we have it. Let's make it a little bigger. And uh, I've zoomed in on this, so this is actually a little bit smaller. Uh, so there's our gauge. And uh, now one thing you could do, uh, so we've done that. So now let's save this to our gallery. Save to custom gallery. This is our sample gauge. And we'll press Enter. And there we have it down here. And now when we launch a new project or go to a new tab, we can just do this. And all that work is preserved. Um, and if you double click on this, by the way, you can make these transparent. Just choose transparent. And there we have a transparent gauge. Uh, so there's lots more things you can do. I'm going to stop there because that's kind of end to end how to create a gauge that looks just like the one you have found, uh, uh, perhaps on the web or in your current uh, uh, literature with the sensors that you're using right now. And so I'll sign off for now and look forward to seeing some of your gauges. Eventually, we're going to allow you to actually post these up to the website, and we're going to have a mini marketplace uh, for some uh, gauge sharing and uh, save some time uh, for uh, some of the work that you're doing. All right, thank you very much.
Um, but let's go back here and uh, let's move these guys aside. Uh, I am going to tell you one thing. Uh, once we have what we want uh, in terms of a gauge type, and we know we're going to be needing this again and again, for instance, if you're working with an Arduino project or a microcontroller board, and there's a certain type of a sensor you know you're going to work with, We'll name this um, uh, demo uh, demo one, and uh, we can give it a description if we want to. And we save. And now one thing that you notice if we go up here to our view tab and make sure show custom gauges pane is on, uh, there is our demo. We just added that to the pane. And let's just do something really quick. Let's just shrink the size down, double click on this, change the color to maroon. Uh, that's ugly, but at least it'll give you a sense of what we're about to do. Let's save this one to the custom gallery, and we're going to say this is demo uh, red, or demo uh, 2, uh, and we'll say save. And there we have demo 2. So now we have this one, and we have this one. And again, this gallery is automatically loaded each time. And by the way, the same thing applies the size dimension. It's a challenge here, and I'm going to take a break. I'll take a pause for the video. Okay, so.